All right, guys, welcome to First Among Equals, and I'm here with Chino, OG Chino, to be <laughs> exact. How you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, Chino actually is the owner of Escala Town. Escala K Town. Escala K Town, mm -hmm. Korea Town, and. Um, I the reason that you're on here is because I have a tremendous amount of respect for oh, what you've likewise, built, you. um, yeah. and I know that uh, just I've gone there several times, and it's just it's such a dope scene, and I really admire the work that you've put into it, and I I just I just wanted to say welcome, thank welcome, you. and well, I'm, thank you for I'm having me for I'm sure honored. for sure I'm super honored. for sure, and I I really appreciated you responded really. In such a positive way, and I was like, "Hell yeah!" Like I was super pumped. Well, you know, and, you know, it's LA. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, yeah. We, we gotta support each other. No of matter. course. Well, cheers no to that. We do, yeah. So, so how's it going? How are everything's good. going? Good. Good. Yeah. Everything's good. I can't complain. We just had our, our fifth anniversary party Friday. You should have been. Congratulations! There. I Thank know, you. dude. Yeah, and yeah. how'd it go? Oh, it was epic. Yeah, it was you know, epic. Black Eyed Peas came through and. You know, Will I Am and Apple rocked like their old classics. The old school shit. DJ Pooh, I mean, which is really rare to see DJ Pooh out spinning, but yeah. you know, he comes through every year, you know, and you know, legends, the glove, Kid Frost, you know, King T was in the house. Damn, dude, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was dope. It was well, dope. I guess that's why I think it's just you you bring the OGS people there and I just oh, man, and it's I, so legit. Thank you. I, I don't take like a minute for granted either, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, while all that is happening, I'm thinking back of when I was young and, and watching them on on stage, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. early eighties and I used to see like DJ Pooh and Mixmaster Spade, rest in peace, and King T, and you know all those guys. Yeah, know? absolutely. The, the, the hip hop scene, you know, they're, you know, it's, it's a lot of uh, uh, LA hip hop history that's never told. You know what I mean? Like I, I think the world kind of starts with NWA when they think of yeah, word of, of LA true. hip hop, but but man, there was so much history before NWA. You know, like almost ten years worth. Yeah, you know what I mean with the whole electro scene with Egyptian Lover and that was my first and, one of my know, first vinyls. Yeah, was yeah Egyptian LA, Lover, LA Dream Team, and you know, and, yeah, you know, and before gangster rap, all those guys were doing hip hop. You yeah, know, that King was the TWC was beatboxing, and you know, yeah, it was the, the classic, <laughs> the, yeah, the OG. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I guess I guess I um I heard I've heard a lot about you and sort of uh the dedication that you've had for it yeah and why why did you how did you come to understand that this was sort of the direction that you decided to go in in the way that you're expressing your love for this um i you know i'm a hip-hop guy you know what i mean I, like completely completely because you know I, I came from from gang culture yeah you know i, I seen like both worlds because i'm korean you know yeah. korean born um, you know, my parents moved to, to Colombia when I was a baby, uh, but my father went as a diplomat. Okay, that was you know going to say, why Colombia yeah, out of so like... so we went as a, di you know, he went as a diplomat, so, uh, you know, he started super poor, but then, uh, you know, Korea started getting richer and, yeah. and, and the money started coming in, and then I got to see like a super prestigious side of, of life, right? Because, you know, I'm hanging out with the ambassador's kids and things like that. Wow. But then they send us to L.A. to to study as as young kids, and back then I think. How how old were you? Were I you was only ten. When well, that's when form. That's your formative years. I mean, that's yeah, you've already yeah. had relationships so, exactly. that you formed, and now you're here. So, it so was you're like weird immigrant here now. Immigrant, and uh, you know, uh, back then I think a lot of Korean parents would send their kids to study in America, but they would stay back. Yeah. And take care of their business because they thought America was just a safe place to be and yeah, wow. and you know you have a sponsor which is like a family friend or or someone that's going to look out and sign you know sign Everything, for your kids yeah. so that's what happened to us it was four of us my sister's only 16 17 then my brother was like 14 then my sister 13 and me oh so you were the baby i'm the baby so you know all, we're all two years apart so yeah so we're, all, we're we're kids and you know of course my mom would come back and forth and uh uh but most of the time we spent alone you know what i mean like with no supervision so for me it was like the gang became like the family, family 
because uh, it was Koreatown, and during that era, late 70s, Koreatown was sort of like the meeting point for for just a lot of gangs. Absolutely. You know, the black it was, gangs. the border. It was like the like the line. Yeah, the black gangs, you know, the, the Mexican gangs. Uh, and it was the beginning of the Asian and, you know, Central American gangs. You know, it was before the Mara Salvatrucha and all that stuff, you know. Yeah. I mean? uh, but it wasn't the nice place where... Where Korean parents, you know, yeah. you know, think, you know, interesting. So, so yeah, so that I mean, you know, my first influence was getting in with the cholos because I'm in ESL class and I can't speak Korean, so I could only connect with the Latin kids. You know what I mean? And they were much nicer to me. Interesting. You know what I mean? I, yeah. yeah. So um, so yeah, so I grew up in that culture, and then getting back to your question is, you know, hip hop came out and. I think, you know, I'm one of those people that could say it even though it's kind of corny that hip-hop changed my life, you know what I mean? Not just mine, but a lot of my homies that, you know, it was the only other cool thing to do and and still, you know, try to get the girls and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah, yeah. back then, yeah, sure. gang culture was it. Like, if, if, you were, if you were not gang-banging, you were just a square, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, there wasn't yeah. another cool thing to get into. Or, That's true. You know what That's I mean? That's true. So, so hip hop was that, you know, like, so I saw hip hop like from the very beginning because I was a music freak, you know, just like you. Yeah. You know, I collected records since I was, I don't know, like nine, ten, because my father collected records in Colombia, so I was already, you know, like about really, the vinyl, yeah. So as soon as we moved here and I saw like 45s or like, I don't know, 28 cents or some crazy Dude. price, 35 cents. Yeah, you know, when, when for I first, sure. I was like, wow, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we weren't rich, we're, you know, but I would like skip lunch. Just to buy a record, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. So then when hip-hop came out, it was like, just automatic, like, whoa, what the hell, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So I'm buying every hip-hop record as it comes out, you know what I mean? So I became sort of like that hip-hop kind of nerd, like I know so much about old hip-hop. I don't know shit about new hip-hop, but... Yeah, me neither. You you talk about old (laughs) hip-hop. Yeah, like they keep going on and on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Yeah, I know for sure. So so you're saying that just that infusion... and then... um, that is like something I just carried with me my whole life. You know what I'm saying? It's just like you kind of become hip hop. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of like part it of your infuses lifestyle. In you. So it's like everything you do has to have some kind of hip hop element in it, or 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 you're not doing your own thing. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think for me too, everything it still is just in the back of my mind. A lot of uh, things that I infuse or like my style, even though you know I have to be more of a professional. Sometimes in in what I do when I'm not doing this, um, I definitely still, I still am hip hop mm-hmm. for sure, and I I feel the same way. Hip hop did change my life; it really did. And, and certain- you're like a little bit of chola too. Like- <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm from, you know, I grew up in Northeast LA. I think there's a little bit of a vibe going for sure. Um, I think it's just, it infused in us, in our culture. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, and it's a beautiful culture. Oh, I love it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I know you no, love it. nowhere else in the world, you know, you know, is this culture as real as it is in in California, Southern California. You know what I'm saying? Like the whole Chicano and the lowrider culture. And, and the movement. You know what I'm saying? And, well, of course, you know, you got to include the whole Southwest, but... You know, it, 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 you just feel it more in L.A., you know? I mean? No, I agree. And I also, and what I love, I love about hip-hop, and I've, I've, I think I've talked about this before, actually, is just, like, the different variations of who you can be in hip-hop. So it's not like you're just this one thing. It's like you can yeah. be this, like, aware, you can listen to Talib, or you can listen to exactly. Gangstar, yeah. and you can have a really open, like, this is the world, and we're kind of challenging the status quo, and we're fighting this. Or you can be, like, sugar-free. You can be, like, you know, some bay shit and do some, like, too short thing and kind of, like, have that little vibe and a little RBL posse, a little rugged sort of <laughs> bass stuff. I did. <laughs> um, you know, or you can, go, you can go another way. You can do the clubby hip-hop. You can yeah. do all that. And all the different variations. You can go gutter, you can go East Coast and do like the Wu Tang, and it's just an amazing space. And, and there's so many different representations of hip hop and music. I, and like you said, I'm not really as knowledgeable on the hip hop now. I've tried to sort of, yeah, yeah, kind of come with a better understanding of what's going on. Yeah, I try to. Yeah, <laughs> right. No, I do. I, I do. try to, yeah. um, and I think it's it. It's I'm, I struggle with it, yeah, um, yeah. and I'm trying to understand. Sand it. I'm trying to understand it, but I'm also like, what what's going on? Yeah. Um, and and I feel like um, 
the things that generationally go through as human beings are reflected through the arts. So the movies that are going on and the, the art that's being displayed and the music that's being kind of created is reflective on who we are as a people and our culture. And uh, sometimes I feel like a lot of it is so sad and mundane right now and sort of even like white noise. Like I just feel like a lot of them, I don't know, I don't feel the emotion I used to feel mm -hmm. for this that I used to feel for hip hop before. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Right? And, I, don't, and I, I struggle with, oh, maybe I'm just older and I'm... I just, no, but, I grew but you're up right, with... and I, I, I think hip hop has been, you know, exploited, like raped. You know what I mean, and and used up to the point where, it, where like it's it's tabloid now. It's you know, love it's and not, yeah. love and hip hop. Oh you God, know? yeah, don't even start on that shit. That's not <laughs> that is true. That's not a representation of hip hop, but they're using the name. You know, they're using the term. Well, because it's the cool. So because it's, it's become cool. Exactly. And I remember so. when it wasn't. I remember when it was like sort of the you know, taboo thing, yeah, and, yeah. and if you listen to it, it, it's just like everything, just like all the cultures that sort of get recreated, and like you were talking about, get taken advantage of and changed, and yeah. I don't know, you know, but I feel like with you, you've created such a great space in in your, in oh, your place, you. <laughs> it's beautiful there, and I just, Thanks. I, the struggle that you must, I mean, what do you think in terms of like creating that space, what has been like the most challenging part for you? Hmm. I mean, it, it is a challenge to just do me, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm, you know, uh, I'm not a mainstream person. Mm -hmm. So even like with the hip hop uh, things and the hip hop DJs I bring or, or whatever, you know, I, I tend to be a little more, maybe more underground than most people. So they don't know like certain people that are coming through the DJ, but for me, it's like, well, this is a big deal. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I know what you mean. But I'm not the only one, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm trying to fill, uh, uh, fill up a, 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 venue. a, a whole venue. Yeah. You know, it's a nice cozy space. It is. So I'm, I'm like thankful that there's other people that connect with my ideas and, oh, and yeah. then they're more loyal and they appreciate the things that happen there more you know what i mean they don't they come and they thank me like man thank you the next day they're like you know thank you for bringing such and such you know and, and that's what you know makes me feel like okay like mission accomplished you know was like that never sorry i got excited mm -hmm. after you said that what uh, was that an intention that you wanted to set when you originally uh, yeah, created the idea? Yeah, I mean, it, it was an intention, but it, but it wasn't, mm, you know what I mean? Like it, aware? It, you weren't you aware know, of it? It wasn't something that I thought would... Come from it? Would, yeah, would, would work Where, as easily yeah. as it did. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because I only knew my circles of people. You know, and uh, you know, I'm, I know LA nightlife. You know, I go out to you know a lot of things, mm -hmm. and so I would know. But it was always the same cool people at all the different events. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So you you run into the same. So so I was like, okay, they they might come through and and, and support, and yeah. they're enough. You know, those are enough people in the circles that I know. Yeah. And that's but, a ripple effect. Yeah. So because it's but like who I, you know, yeah, then they know exactly. the circle, and then it just kind of. What happened with Escala is that people came from all over, that that heard about it, or they just stopped by one time and they just said, "Wow, you, you know what I mean?" They connected with it, and and now I realize that you know I only knew you know a small, a very Isn't that small crazy? part of, of of what this yeah, thing you've created. That's like and yeah, so exactly. much. No, you have. I mean, and then a very small part of LA. You know what I mean? LA yeah, is so big, and now it is so big. all these different circles come from other places that are on the same kind of vibe you know what i mean people that appreciate it tra it attracts the, the same exactly. type of people yeah. it's like a tribal thing exactly. like you yeah, know, and you then and all different cultures which is dope you know what i mean like you know it, it, that's that's another thing that makes me feel good about escala is that you, you know no matter when you go you're gonna see a nice balance of everybody yeah it's it's you know? a beautiful yeah. mixture of people and yeah I think Cape Town's like that, anyways. Um, yeah, it's just—it's you know, like the most multicultural. I area, know. You know, it's yeah. amazing there. Yeah. Do you, um, when when coming to the understanding that this is what you were going to do, I know that uh, Escala is layover. Yeah. Right? So layover. So the like, what 
What What made you choose that word, though? Like, what because made you I come? didn't know. <laughs> Actually, we opened for about two, three weeks with no name. Oh, really? Because I'm kind of like a picky guy. So yeah. I, I couldn't think of a name. Because I, I knew like the name has to be like something I'm just going to be married to. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, a name is a big deal. Yeah. So, our, you know, uh, my chef, uh, chef at the time, Chris O, every day was like, dude, you got a name yet? Come on, you got a name yet? And. And we had to open, we opened up with no name. Was it like a soft opening? So yeah, like, like a soft a, opening. Okay. So friends would come by and be like, oh, you know, just don't name it anything. Leave it like this. You know, oh, like, like one of those nameless yeah, places right, with just exactly, an address. You know, <laughs> uh, so, you know, but I, I, you know, I was going through all kinds of different names. Um, and then my mom called me while I was still like hammering shit, you know what I mean? Yeah, I yeah. was still remodeling in there and uh, she uh, 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 she called me and uh, she she um and where does she live now when she in Bogota oh she's still yeah. in Bogota yeah that's she funny she was still in Bogota and we had just barely opened and and uh, yeah we had no name and she said oh she was tra going to Korea so she goes tengo escala en Los Angeles and I was like and after I got off the phone with her I was like escala that sounds kind of cool. That does sound kind of yeah, cool. And then, yeah, yeah, I started asking everybody, what do you think of Scala? I was like, oh, it sounds dope. It sounds classy. You know? <laughs> it does sound classy. It sounds very... So that, that's what I went with. You that's know? But I was thinking all kinds of crazy stuff. I was thinking like cartel and then Colombian people were like, no, don't do that. <laughs> like, we're not trying to do that. Narcos haven't even come yeah, out yet. Exactly. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, so yeah. And the menu, same thing. It's like a Colombian-Korean I know, the fusion, dude. Like, but that was was totally uh because uh, i had no idea what i was doing i've never owned a restaurant i had no plan and that was my next question you i know? was like yeah, what? i had no plan and you know my sister i mean you know thank my sister she's the one that made this whole thing happen really you know what I'm because she's the one that that uh came up with the you know she came up on uh, that, that space that opportunity to take over the space and she passed it on to me, like, hey, you want to do something? She's the one that invested money to make it happen. And, so and she, what were you doing? Sorry, what were you doing before that? Well, I, I was working in music, and I was living in New York. Okay. You know, I, I had just finished a long run doing management, you know, okay. man, managing hip-hop artists. Uh, Executioners was one of the long, okay. longest runs. But mostly, like, you know, small uh, underground, you yeah, know, underground like, hip -hop. And old school hip-hop like groups. Like OG. And, and, you know, and doing artwork and... You know, just doing little things, DJing, you know, uh, you know, promoting parties. I was just kind of living off of just hustling hip hop, I guess, right? The hip hop uh, yeah. life. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Been there. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but it wasn't, oh, you know, you know, I'm living in Brooklyn, so bills are getting high and I'm barely yeah. keeping up. And, and then, uh, you know, one of my visits to LA, visiting my, my sister, my sister's like, hey, you always wanted to have a bar, check out this space, because... You know, I, I got a chance to take over. That's and, crazy. And boom, that's how that happened. So so because of that, my sister was the one going, okay, what what are, what are we doing? You yeah. Know what I mean, what's the menu? What's the menu? Interesting. And then, yeah. So uh, under pressure, I was like, you know what? Let's just do Korean Colombian. That's her favorite food. <laughs> and wow. then she was, and you know, and she's one of those people. She just lets me run with whatever, right? That's so she's dope. like, go ahead, do it. She, she was cool with it. So... Without that, that support, you know what I mean. From, That's amazing. From her and, and and you know and 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 her best friend, who's also an investor. You know, I couldn't have. You know, I don't have money to start one of those things by myself. No, it's you know a lot saying? of work. Like, exactly. That's major. But, That's why I was like, but, where did uh, this come from? But the reason why I'm the face of it and everything is because yeah, you know, I I, I did have some investments, but they were totally hands off. You know what I'm saying? And and they totally trusted me with with whatever I want to do. So I got just, you know, I got to do me, you know? That's so beautiful. I, I got to do me 100%. Because if not, I'd be miserable. You know, like a restaurant is like the worst. <laughs> they talk the about how hard thing, it is to know? stay open. They talk about how yeah, hard it is to, to just, keep it going. And it's just stressful. Like everything's yeah, breaking down every other day. And, and you're dealing with like, you know, stuff that's petty. But in, a, in the restaurant world, it's like a big deal that you run out of soap. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> or like if, if you run out of toilet yeah, paper, it's like, it's oh, like shit. oh shit! That's you know what I'm true. saying? All but, the little things, but all those little things that that are meaningless. But that's what I'm saying. But so, meaningful. So you're dealing with stress from like the the pettiest thing to like 
the taxes, you know what I'm saying? Uh. Like the biggest, more, most complex things. So, yeah, I don't, you know, but if, you know, if it wasn't for me being able to bring art, you know, have the, my, my artist homies and come and do graph on oh, the walls. Oh, it's beautiful. And, and let, you know, the DJ homies come in and spin and, and you know what I mean? So, so if I, love I didn't about bring that, you know what I mean? Like, even with the, with the food, like, I, I love when, when other chefs come and do pop-ups and, because, you know, like, food is art too, you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So it's like, you know, it's cool to be able to do that too, like, to be able to offer, offer somebody, someone a space to, like, come up with a dish, you know, like, big twin, uh, t uh, t a twin from uh, Mob Deep, you know, uh, uh, infamous Mob. He, he loves to cook. He's like a chef. So we did a pop-up. Yeah, he did, we did a pop-up with him, like, I don't know, three years ago, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, he had Alchemist DJ. That's he had dope, but he was killing it, huh? Yeah, but it was like, you know, it's like a hip hop food that's what and I love. music thing. But that's know? why I love your spot because I feel like it reminds me of like record shop in a way. Yeah, well, I used to have a record shop, so maybe that has a lot to is do with it. Is that what it is? I get yeah. the vibe. I just, yeah. it has that very, like, you come home. Like, when you love record shops and you go there, you feel like you're home. It's like, I'm here. This is like where I belong. You know, yeah, and, and the, it's and it's just like I, I mean I haven't felt like that in a really long time, but yeah. I still feel like that. Like when I when I go and visit your spot, it makes me think, this is like where you, where you. It's like this is the spot. That's mm, it. Uh, like that's all I can say. <laughs> it's, it's the energy and the the just the warmth in the in your design style, your your artistic aesthetic is like so on point, that's and it true. it makes me feel you bring me back to a time that no longer exists right now. Yeah, and yeah. that's okay. I think sometimes, like, as you get older, you, you, you take for granted what used to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah. you've created, you've yeah. time, I, it's a time capsule. I feel like you've frozen time into this feeling of, like, what mm -hmm. things used to be. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of the music and the culture and the art and the food and just, like, the way that you've created it is just so unique. Like, there's no place yeah, like that. And that's why yeah. I wanted you here, because I wanted to understand... I always like to learn from people and I feel like you have all this wisdom in the sense of understanding and creating it and just kind of doing you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, so, I mean, I, you know, I'm not trying to fan you know, out too hard, but. No, no, come on. But I think, you know, I, I think you're the same. You know what I mean? I, I think certain people, and it probably starts from like early childhood, we, we uh, were kind of like. Hungry, dude. Stubborn and like we just want to do things our way. You know and hungry saying? as fuck, man. And, and, to to, to and do what I want to do. Yeah, and some some of us are lucky enough to have a family that gives us room to do that, right? Like or they or you're kicking and fighting and kicking yeah, and screaming I, to do I, it. I come from like a, a Korean family and old school. You know, my parents are old school Koreans, but at the same time, they were never like, you know, you gotta go to school and and be a lawyer and. And whatever you know like you know I wanted to draw I wanted to be an artist and from an early age I used to say that and they were you know they were like cool you yeah you're good at wow it. and you know they always think that's really me, rare you know so, my mom's yeah. like that too but yeah. it's like rare when you find other people that I, yeah and I think now that we're older we, we still appreciate we, that I mean that's the, we, we're that's it that's all we know we, we have that's to do we things know. right you know? we have to I don't know any other way and I don't want to force myself to do I'll die yeah like I can feel it the death of me yeah, it, yeah. I, I some people I'm so blessed because I think you're right having that kind of yeah. support system I mean I have so much respect for people that, that get to work at 9 a.m. and all that stuff uh, because I was never able to you know, I just didn't have that discipline, you know what I mean? It's just not me, you know what I mean? But me not being able to be so structured at the same time allowed you to gave make me this. an advantage on another side, you know what totally. I'm saying? That gave me an advantage for, like, being more creative. Well, this one that happened. Yeah, exactly. You know this one that happened. Yeah. And you still have structure, you're just structured differently. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just not westernized. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what, I just think it's not the westernized, westernized way that people expect you to live your life. Yeah. And I still I still get up really early in the morning. Mm -hmm. But I I still go to a job that I absolutely love. I'm so happy yeah. for this it's fucking job blessing, I have, dude. You know? It's a blessing. But and I know, you know, we live I strip out on how hard. I was talking about this in my last podcast. It's hard being in LA. Like 
the amount of money you have to spend and the amount of money you have to earn just to stay afloat here. And I mean, you could take the hit and go somewhere else, but then there's less action and there's less like stuff going on. And I think mm -hmm. you're a move, like you like, you're all about it. Like you're so, I mean, from what I perceive, yeah, <laughs> is I think you are a social person, yeah, to a certain degree. To you're a not certain an, degree, you're not a total introvert, or this wouldn't mm, have happened. I mean, yeah, you're, I think I'm fifty fifty. You're fifty fifty. Yeah, I, I I have my moments, yeah, and I go through my phases. I'll yeah. go a few months yeah. where I kind of hide out in a cave a little yeah. bit, and then I'll come out and go like mm -hmm. balls to the wall. But it depends on kind of how I'm feeling, you know. Yeah. Um, as an artist, though, I didn't know that you were. So what what was your medium? When you were working, like doing art and stuff, well, was I it mean, graph growing, or was growing it? up, I did everything. Oh yeah, I did a lot. So of it was graph. just tagging yeah. and throwing. No, like, well, piecing tagging and... was when the you know the the the, the gang era. Yeah, you know, I did a lot of you know cholo graffiti. Yeah, or anything. But not like art, not like pieces. No, or but throw -ups. you know, but back then we used to do pieces. You know what I mean? No caps, just whatever fuzzy cap came with the yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, whatever came with the can. And but but our thing in in one well, not just our thing in every neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, man, cholos used to put up their murals, like yeah. murals. You know what I'm saying? Like we used to yeah, put up murals, up. block letters, old English letters, uh, cholo characters and woman characters. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like all that stuff. So. Uh, I was doing that when I was young, you know, I was like, oh, I don't know, like this was 81, mm -hmm. 82 when, yeah. when this was happening. And then I think around 83 was when I saw New York graffiti, mm. you know, I saw Style Wars on, t on like PBS or something like that. And then uh, there was like, this kid that moved to, uh, from New York to a... Uh, to LA and I uh, saw him in art class and he had a sketch, a black book. Mm -hmm. And we all like surrounded him and he was showing us his characters and stuff. And I was like, wow, that's when I started realizing, you know, what hip hop graffiti was about. Mm -hmm. But uh, I never, I, I, I would do it, you know what I mean? But not so much. It wasn't uh, like. Like going out and, and, and get getting up. Because I didn't really know the culture of it. You know, I didn't know that. That's a whole other culture. You know, right? I didn't know you're supposed to get up all over the city. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You had to go put in work. You had so, to go like, if I knew how to do the, the letters. You know, so I would do the letters on paper. And I was like, okay, this you're is like, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, this I'm, is I'm good. And then, uh, <laughs> and then you know, we used to go to like, hang out like at abandoned uh, apartments in, in our neighborhood a lot. So I would paint those up. You know what I'm saying? Like, safe. Yeah. So, yeah, we would paint those up. Exactly. It was safe. Yeah. I used to do that too. So yeah, <laughs> or but like no. little alleys, or like kind of yeah. you kind of know that in neighborhood. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I did it, but not like the guys that really did it. You know. Yeah, yeah. Saying. You weren't making it a whole I, lifestyle I was a fan change. Of those guys. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I would just go to Radio Tron just to take pictures of what everybody. Yeah, what was going on? It was cracking. You know, Prime. You know. And B. Oh, and did you do? Did you go to B Boy Summit and all that stuff too? Uh, you know, B Boy. I mean, I, I'm that I'm that old that that I actually like when B Boy Summit started. I was already yeah. B Boy Summit was like kind of when I yeah, was growing up. Yeah. It was like oh, it's B Boy Summit. I, like yeah. gotta go. I know. I'm pretty dated. No, you know. but but I yeah. But, but I've been to B Boy Summit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, yeah. Asian, I mean, it's you know, all these Asia's yeah. the girl. You know, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, but I used to see Asia back in. What, 90, 92? When, when, the, when the hip hop shop was around. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. She was always dancing there, so I used to see her there. I remember I, I saw Medusa a few times too. It's just, oh, Medusa. She's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. That's it's LA, a, LA Royal. I know, dude. I trip out on just the amount of OG people that I just saw and I didn't realize at the time that it was sort of like a moment in time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you just live in it when you're growing up. You don't. You don't think about it that it's gonna phase out and that mm -hmm. things are gonna change. You know? Exactly. You take it for granted when it's happening, but you gotta try to absorb. You know, you gotta, you know, know that it's gonna end one day. You know. Yeah. I think when I was uh, road managing and yeah, uh, yeah. traveling all over the world, and you know, you you know, free trips, you know, and getting paid for them. Yeah. And then smoking weed and drinking and. and and being at a party is like your job, but yeah, I would always sit there and think like, man, this isn't going to last forever. Really? Like, like, like let me just have How old were you when that. that was happening and all you were thinking my, about my, I, 20s? All, all, my, my 30s. Your 30s. Yeah, my 30s. So you were like just living in it, knowing 
realizing. No one is going to. Well, in your, thir- no and in your 30s, I think you're a little bit more, like, mm-hmm. aware. Yeah. Because you've gone through your 20s. Yeah. Your tw- I don't know. My tw- I was like, what ha- What? What was that? It was like, yeah. boop. Yeah. It's a blurb. Like, it just kind of goes. So, I, I don't think. It's good time, so. Yeah. I don't think I ever had a day when I was like, oh, this job sucks. Or, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah, enjoying every minute of it. You know? I think it's the the youth too like you just sort of go through the motions and you don't you're not aware Mm -hmm. i don't know like you're just happy i don't know i was super happy i was super motivated and ready to go so now where are you at like what's going on now like with you and kind of what are you doing well right now like you know escala is it you know um well yeah it's a huge thing (laughs) (laughs) um i mean if I could expand, I would want to do something in, oh, wow. in, in Colombia, in Bogota. Oh, wow. And that's kind of been my plan the last few years. I've been going back and forth and and looking at spaces and things. and Because it's really hard to make it in, in the States now, like as far as a business, especially in California. Yeah. Uh, like I'm, you know, people think, oh yeah, Chino has his, his restaurant, he's chilling. Like, no, I'm not chilling. It's like, he, he, you know, I'd be better off having a regular job. You know what I'm saying? Financially, mm-hmm. like that's how hard it is in American economy right now. If I you, believe it. If you try to have a, a mom's and pops business, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's get, what it is. And, Absolutely. You know, it's and, OG uh, mom and pop and business. And it's getting worse and worse. Politics is getting it's bullshit. Yeah. Worse and worse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it is. I'm starting to think of a plan B. You know That's I smart, mean? though. Like, That's smart. Yeah, yeah. So if this, you know, like, if I could start something in another country that has a whole different economy. Wow. And, and other advantages. Yeah, you know yeah. Saying? Well, you got roots over there. And, yeah, and, you know, my parents are there. I uh, have beautiful friends there. You know, the whole hip-hop community, um, you know, that I'm super fortunate to have connected with. You Absolutely, know what I'm yeah. So, yeah, so I think that's my plan. And of course, I would love to do something in Korea, but I can't do two things at the same time. And no. I'm more familiar with Colombia, but every time I go to Korea, I also feel like bringing something there. Um, and you-, you know, and the same thing, it's not like business, it's almost like. You know, like bringing a little piece of yourself, LA. You know, like oh, well, yeah. You know, well, LA yeah. and 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 New York and and hip hop culture more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Like just kind of bring that to other places. And do you feel split just because of the kind of trifecta of like? No, I feel the opposite. It makes me feel like I have a bigger community base, yeah, like a bigger community. You know what I mean? Like, well, that's what I guess I I said it and it sounded sort of in a negative connotation. Mm-hmm. No. I guess I meant like you want to give more out, mm-hmm. and oh, okay, yeah, that's well, kind of what I meant. Split, like, yeah, like you want to share that, yeah. share the wealth of you in, in a, of you. Yeah, in that <laughs> sense, because you're LA. Yeah, in that you know? sense, yeah, in that sense, yeah. Like Escala, like you know, I feel like I owe. Uh, the 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 korean community uh uh a party (laughs) and (laughs) i owe you know the colombian community who's been super supportive and i owe them a a a party because our celebration was like the hip-hop party you know it was like the you know like the general yeah well it was like the um, subject exactly yeah yeah but at the same time, it's like, I feel like, you know, what about all those Colombians that came and supported that, that are not hip hop people, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. that are, that have supported the restaurant and, the same. and support you. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like, yeah, you're right. I feel a little bit split. Like I feel I like guess I, I need to do that. something. I heard that in, <laughs> yeah. in your, in the way you described it, it yeah. felt like you sort of felt this need yeah. and this sort of pulling, Yeah. you know? So... If you were to do it, you'd do Colombia first, which is some, sort of something mm-hmm. you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. I would do Colombia first, and then I would do Korea. And uh, that'd be that'd be really challenging. Oh yeah. From a distance. Exactly. Because I mean, this one would still be flowing. Yeah, which is hard in itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Just for this one to flow. So. Well, and it's so beautiful, and it's. Uh, 
the energy. It's sort of like splitting your energy into yeah. something else. And um, what would you say, I guess, for people who are starting something like this or wanting to start something sort of in the sense that you have? Like, what do you, what kind of wisdom would you part, you know, sort of share with people? Hmm. I mean, it's, it's hard for me to give advice being a first time restaurant. Um, you kick an ass, guy. though, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but. You know, I guess what worked for me is that that it's different. You know what I mean? I don't think it's unique. Right? I don't think a Colombian Korean restaurant exists in the whole world. You know what I mean? I mean, coming from Colombia, I know you know I know that there isn't one. Day, you know, that doesn't exist down here. Uh, I know it doesn't exist in Korea, so I, I don't think it exists anywhere else yeah. in the world. Um, and if it does, I don't think it's hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, this is so dope. <laughs> so I, I think all it's those beautiful. elements that make it so different, even though it's like, to some people it might be weird, you know? Like at the beginning, I think we got some bad comments like on Yelp, like, oh, they're trying too hard because they're like confused. They don't know what they want to do. But I'm just like, I'm, I'm a bunch of different things. You know what I'm saying? So to an yeah, outsider that doesn't know me, yeah, I am, I am going to seem confused. You know what I'm saying? But no, I, 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 it made the place very different. And I think everybody has their own unique yeah. thing. But I think especially when you're investing money and, and time and when you're depending on other people to understand what you're doing, yeah. you get a little bit scared. And then you feel safer just doing what works for other people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, you yeah. see that, that restaurant working. So, oh, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Which you, is you what, what is saying? based on this country is like... So everything's the same. So everything's everything the same. So it's like, oh, or, or they want you to franchise yeah, the same shit exactly. and cookie cutter like, this oh, yeah, over like, did here. You guys, did you see how this restaurant is decorated? Let's do kind of like that, that thing. That thing, yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Like, so then everything starts... So how did you... Uh, I mean, you, you're past that, but how did you struggle? I mean, that's a struggle, though, hearing all that and sort of mm -hmm. uh, questioning yourself even a little bit. Or I think for me like, it was like... For me, I, I was blessed not knowing what I was doing. You know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. Because I didn't go by any standard. Yeah. Uh, if I had done it before, then I probably would have been more scared. Or I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. You would have been tainted, right, sort of. Right, or I don't know. But just like not knowing what I'm doing, I, I was only able to do me. You know, just yeah. because I don't know anything else. Like, I don't know... I'm not a hamburger expert. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. So I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, uh, but I know how to taste Korean like, food, and I know how to taste. Korean and you know what's food. good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just went with what I knew, you know, and 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 I think that's what made me like not care about that's whatever so standard they might be. Like even uh, you know, my first chef was. When we're going through plans for the menu, he was like, "So, what do you want this place to be? You want it to be like..." A dinner spot, or do you want it to be like a lounge party spot? And I was like, "Well, both." Can but we do both? he was like, "Well, how are you gonna make that work? Like, you gonna move the furniture out at a certain time, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like yeah, because he's an expert. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So he's been through it so much that he's got a he's got a script uh, yeah, of what exactly. he runs down. Yeah, but which but can be good me, for certain I'm, things. But me being naive, I'm not yeah, like thinking like, like why people just dance what, everywhere. Exactly. Why That's wouldn't me it too. work? I just, like, dance <laughs> through, the, through all the boobs. <laughs> like you know it's I mean? still and good. The, and like coming from Colombia, it's like you go to dinner in, in Colombia, and and when there's music, people get up in the middle God, of dinner so and dance. It's dude. I know. You know, it's it's normal. It's like you know, half kind of party, half dinner, you know, it's a normal thing down there. So that's what you created yeah. here yeah. and you didn't have to structure it. It's the westernized way though, mm -hmm. that people think. And yeah, then you're it's like, yeah. And you know, and I'm, and I'm in Koreatown, which makes it stand, stand out even more because in Koreatown, everything is really similar. It you is. Know, now you're right. You're now right. it's changing because, you go there, yeah. because now you're getting all these different kinds of food coming in in a variety of restaurants but for a long time koreatown was just korean restaurants and they were all the same mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah every and you same. just that's where you go yeah, for k-town and you yeah. just go there that's where you go you exactly. get you get the you get the meat <laughs> get the unlimited meat <laughs> it's legit some people right. know the best you know right. whatever they're yeah but you're right i guess it is yeah and now that the new generation koreans like 
the parents mm. are passing on their businesses to the younger Koreans oh. who are hip hop influenced, right? So now you see all these cool little spots spots popping up in Koreatown, and and you see businesses changing to where like to the younger generation's liking. You know what I mean? You see graffiti popping up. Yeah. Inside yeah, that's... business, inside a boba shop. You know, you yeah, see graffiti. Like, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that's beautiful. Cool. Well. That is yeah. super cool. Yeah. Well, and I think that's what I like about what you said. It's just about, even before we were talking uh, through the podcast, it's just like you doing you. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. not, I think if a lot, I mean, you know what the thing is, though? This is, this is an example of someone who did do you, and it's doing really well. And there's other examples of people who do well, themselves. That's why that's the, the appearance, but that's good. Let's. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I just say no. No, it's I mean it's, it's doing everyday good. struggle. It's, doing good. I'm it's not, an everyday yeah. struggle. Yeah. yeah. What song is that? But anyways. Yeah, anyway. yeah. Yeah. No, it's an everyday struggle, and I, I from appearances. But yeah. this is why you're here, is because I think I wanted to understand more, kind of the nuts and bolts of who you are and like what like how that came to fruition for you because um it's inspiring people yeah. want to hear like how people are hustling dude it's a hustle and you've been yeah, hustling yeah. since yeah since out the womb i think i've yeah i've had very few real well i've had a bunch of jobs yeah but as far as like as a as an adult you know uh, so yeah, i feel I haven't like i have had many jobs exactly you know, so. and so i feel for you stability may or may not have always been that important to you right no right no, yeah no. i think what's more important I, it's i don't know I, I think maybe it's that artist thing like you know like uh Dude, I know we kind of i don't know i mean i don't know if it's in us like naturally or because we're like our, consider ourselves artists uh, we try to romantic uh, romanticize like suffering and and sadness. We have to. And things like we that. We have to, because if not, we won't <laughs> yeah. fucking do it. So, for me, it's like, it's always been ups and downs, like, my whole lifetime. You know what I mean? Like, my earliest memories, like, we were dirt poor. Like, I used to see rats running under our, our the bed floor and, all that, yeah. and all that stuff. And, and then I remember being rich, and then I remember being poor in L.A. again. And You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. So, did that matter? No, it didn't because you're, you're a kid, but then that conditions you, you know, to where like, you know, as a grown up, when I have, when I'm down and out, it, it's, it's not, I'm hungry, but I'm not hurting. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know I'm going to be okay. Be okay. And, and I almost find a, a little, a, a little satisfaction. Not satisfaction. It's kind of crazy, but yeah, kind of like beauty in it. Yeah. Like it's kind of romantic, you know, like, oh, I'm in New York and it's fucking winter and yeah. I have nothing to eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're such like, a poet, dude. That's you know hilarious. I mean? Like little shit like that, you know. No, I think you're right. I, I understand the romanticizing yeah, the struggle. Yeah. yeah. And, Cause, I, and I think for a lot of people, they, they can't understand that. You know, they only think that happiness is the only emotion you're supposed to have. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And if, you, if you're not happy, something's wrong. But I, I think we go through all of them, you know. I think we should go through every emotion because it's going to happen. You know what I mean? We're yeah. Gonna, we're gonna lose, Even if you deny lose it. Lose a loved one. Uh, People are going to die. Is, pain gonna is going to happen. happen. Yeah, it's, that's saying? the only, so, that's the one thing I always say is, that's the only thing that we can count on mm -hmm. is change. That's it. Change. Yeah. Everything's going to change. It's the only thing I can say to anybody. Like anytime I talk to, because I work with kids or I work with kids and they'll say, it's not fair. And I'm like, honey, life's not fair. I'm yeah. going to tell you that, right? I don't know if anyone's told you that. Yeah. People always try to make it right for kids. Like, oh no, that's not fair. They have to give you half of the No, no. they actually don't. You no. have to understand that like life is not about it being half yeah. humans have this idea at least what i feel like uh like you people from the states like like this entitlement like this is what we should be getting and i need my 25.5 percent because da, 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 and it's like once you let that shit go and sort of go it's just gonna suck man sometimes it's gonna suck and it's yeah. sitting through yeah. the sucky parts that make you the strongest because mm -hmm. if you can sit through the sucky parts then all the other things are like 100 amazing 20 times more yeah. because you know what you could go through you know the depths of your darkest areas in your life and yeah and even 
it's weird because even by culture, right? Like I'm I'm Korean born, so it's like that's my my culture, and Korea is like, you know, the country with the highest suicide rate in the world. Uh, and really? then, yeah. I thought, I, mean, it, was, I thought it was like, Japan. Well, I think they kind of took out Japan. <laughs> really? I recently yeah, it's heard. It's pretty bad. Yeah, Japan but, too. Uh, but Colombian culture, they're like one of the happiest people in the world. Interesting. So it's like, so it's sort of like I'm in, in the middle of, of that too. You know what wow. I'm saying? Not just on other, you know, levels. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like in the middle of. Of something kind of, yeah, you know, like deeper than just food and music, and, yeah, yeah, and totally. that kind of fusion. You know, I'm kind of like a fusion of both extremes of like the yin and, the, yin the, and the, yang, yeah, kind of, of, of it. how people deal with yeah. emotions. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like fortunate in that sense too, because I think I'm happy like a Colombian, but at the same time, I uh, like I've experienced that. The, the struggle, the, the sadness, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. Korean kind of emotional thing, you know what I mean? So it's kind of, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of it like sounds like a, you've thought about that. Yeah, yeah, no, because I trip out. Like, I almost feel like, you know, like they, you know, I almost feel like they should understand, like, learn from each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because Colombian people, maybe they're a little bit too happy sometimes. Yeah. You know what I'm like saying? Like, too free and too... Because, yeah, politics is all messed up and all that stuff, and they get upset about it, but at the same time, it's not upset to the point where they're... You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, 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 you know, where a revolution is going to start, or... Interesting. Or anything like that. So, yeah. And that's why Colombia's on... A country that, that's been, you know, uh, sort oppressed. Of, and, and taken and advantage of and sort of infiltrated by, so, yeah. by like, bigger, be sort of, like, bigger... Because people are so kind and... Just and, sort of, like... Just chill. That they yeah, are. they don't make things a bigger deal exactly. and they don't... They know how to get over things really easy. They've yeah. seen it all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's amazing. I yeah. didn't even think about yeah, that. It's been a country that's been... A, at war since it started. Like yeah. It's been a war in, you know, in itself. You know Absolutely, what I'm within like, itself. Within itself. And know, it's forever. Like, it's, there's never been peace in Colombia. Like, never. Ever in history. Yeah, which is it's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah. So, ah, check So it's almost I'm like they're out on that. It's almost like they're resisting that whole, that whole thing, thing by of, just being happy, by learning how to be happy with whatever. Sh you know what I'm saying? Whatever the condition is, like, fuck it. Let's yeah, just let's happy. just push through it. And, like, the family, uh, the the way the families are, in, in, it's so beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Like every generation, you know, you'll see three generations come and party. You know, the, you know, kids, parents, grandma, they all go party together. together. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, dude, I've always wanted that. You know, it's so, it's so <laughs> dope, which is so different from Korea. Yeah, totally. You know, like in Korea, the parents don't go and hang out with their kids for, yeah. and go party with them and go drink with them. Never. You know what it's I'm super saying? Just like, separated, yeah. yeah. And it's more like in secrets. Exactly. And so, and then under a veil. Like, yeah, and it's like, instead, they're, they're putting a lot of pressure on their kids to, to, to be this and that. And, and yeah, and you know, not everybody can be number one. So the ones that are not are like jumping off of bridges and stuff. You know what I mean? So it's. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, and it's a trip. You know, it's a trip. So. That's so interesting. Yeah, Amer you know, America, yeah, we complain about America, but, you know, uh, uh, America does give you no, certain I freedoms. You I know love what I'm my saying? country. Freedoms and certain opportunities that if you are able to look for them and catch them at the right time, then you could take advantage of, of, of a good situation. Well, and also based on you know what I mean, your self esteem yeah. and your confidence exactly. and your drive. Because exactly. I mean, you had to have been super driven for everything, and it's all about timing too. Yeah, yeah. For and, you, for and, it. and taking risks. You know what I mean, like you know. Well, and you're a risk, risk taker right? by nature, so yeah, yeah. I think that's why it sort of worked. Yeah. In your favor, I actually have a question about your parents then this is like random but like them moving to colombia like how did that impact who they were as individuals like i find that really interesting because the, it, that it, was a, a life-changing experience uh, and then they must have i mean you said they were kind of they were cool with you anyway yeah, yeah. what you did but i'm sure I being in colombia affected the way they were with you too yeah, then at that yeah. point i mean they were very korean they were still strict but i think they learned you know i think they learned certain things from 
from Colombian people and, and culture that, that yeah. you know, that they kind of influenced us with, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, yeah, like that. Like, for example, not putting so much pressure on, you know, academic pressure. On, on well, yeah, because their environment changed, so they yeah. didn't have that pressure of other right. people pressuring them. I mean, they pressure. did it. It wasn't, like, total freedom, but yeah. it wasn't to the point where, like, you know, they, they killed their self-esteem for not <laughs> complying, you know what I mean? For yeah, not absolutely. succeeding in Well, because, yeah, and also, like you said, they were around people yeah. who were different. You know, because I, 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 ne I never got a degree, you know what I mean? I never finished college. So, uh, did you go for a minute or do any of that? Yeah, yeah. You know, I ended up going to art school right out of, uh, right out of high school. I didn't even get to graduate Which on art stage. Uh, Otis Parsons. Oh, you went to Otis? Yeah. yeah, so Otis and Parsons in New York yeah. was a merger back in... Back, back oh, it was? I didn't know that. This was 84. Okay. So I was one of those kids that was just lucky. I would just kind of make it through everything, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know, like I, went, I went to four high schools. You know, I got, kept getting kicked out of every school. Uh, I didn't get to graduate on stage, so I had to stay in high school longer oh, that's a mind to fuck. get my credits. Yeah. And then after that... Uh, so you were a super senior. Yeah. And then, but I had a, an art teacher, you know... Uh, at Hollywood High School. Okay. Oh, you went to Hollywood. Yeah, well, one of the schools. Oh, yeah, one of the schools. What were the schools? Can I know? I want to know. started at Fairfax. Okay. It was Fairfax. Dang, you were right in there. Yeah, right Fairfax. Melrose. Uh, oh, good old days. Love Melrose. Fairfax, Uni, Hollywood. All right. Then LA. Finished up at LA. That's funny. Yeah. LA High. And LA High oh was God. the school I was supposed to go to from the beginning. I was like, <laughs> and like, I was avoiding full it. circle, y'all. I was avoiding it because by that time, because I had already gone through, like, gang shit, like, in junior high. Yeah, you know I mean? it always starts So, by early. high school, I was already like, ah, oh, try to, like, stay out of trouble. I don't want to go to L.A. because that's, like, you know, Yeah, like, gang. that's, like, it's like going to Franklin over here. Yeah, it's like, so end that up was at, too at, crazy. But I end up at L.A. anyway. But anyway, I have, because of the, that, that art teacher, uh, Miss Styles, like, she's this old old lady and she's an artist and she like recognized my talent or whatever and she's like oh you're so good you you could go to art school you could do this and that and she started sending me to little scholarship programs like oh. summer programs or saturday programs at otis where i'd be like drawing like nude models with like grown dudes you know what i'm damn, saying damn that's so dope though like, oh. like, so you know so that kind of inspired inspired and kind of for sure. gave me some guidance to her like okay i know what i have to do you know what i mean like yeah you saw a path yeah a path which exactly. you never see exactly. so <sighs> it's nice when you have mentors i didn't really mentors. have any mentors yeah, dude yeah so so then you know she was like apply to otis that'll be a good school for you so i applied and then uh they uh questioned my track record okay because my they were like i would go from like Thug straight life fails a whole semester to like almost all A's like you know what I mean they were like okay you, you seem like you could do it but what the hell's going on and yeah, why you, well, like write us explain yourself yeah so yeah I, I wrote a, a long okay. essay I had to write a long ass essay like trials and tribulations y'all explaining my life story up until that time interesting you know like this is what happened like fuck you know we grew up on our own in LA and I ended up in this situation and and they loved it. They were like, you know, it's a great story. You we could are... make it a movie. We could make it a movie. <laughs> they were like, you are exactly the type of student we one. want here. <laughs> You're the gifted one with the, the struggle. <laughs> but then I fucked up. Like within a year and a half, <laughs> I stopped going to school. Because you know? <laughs> I'm still hanging out. I'm still smoking weed. Yeah, every day just on, on the, the street, block, you know? like, yeah. hanging out, chilling. Because oh, it's still close. You know, Otis Parsons was across the street from MacArthur Park. Dude. In '84. And I what? lived in Koreatown. And I lived in Koreatown. So I had no idea. I, I would drive through maybe three or four weed spots yeah, yeah. on the Just way like to class. Score. Just score <laughs> you know, on the way. Like, oh, this stuff. Dude. You know, so, yeah, that didn't work. Yeah. Damn, but, dude. You know, everything happens for a reason. No. You know yeah. Because I, mean? I think about it, like, if I had finished art school, like, I, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. No, or, no, 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 no. And then I wouldn't have got to li live that hip-hop life, you know what I mean? Like, I probably would have been at some, I don't know, ad agency or yeah. doing drawings for a newspaper. Who knows? Doing like, stuff for yeah, somebody exactly. else and not doing you. Exactly. So everything happens for a reason. Cheers you know? to that, you, man. You just got to accept whatever happens. You know? mm. 
Do you feel like um, knowing all the information, like everything that you went through, what do you think like was the the hardest struggle fighting as when you were younger, like just people understanding you? Mm-hmm. Was that was that something that you really struggled with? It when I was younger. Yeah. No, no, I never felt. I, oh, it's weird because I always felt like the outsider. Because it started from when I was a little kid. You well, know? that makes like, sense. Like, in Colombia, there was no Asians. I mean, my my father is probably the first Korean to settle. Set foot. You know Flag what I'm here. Like, <laughs> so we go to school. Everybody's like doing this to us, Talk teasing to. us. But at the same time, it's like not racism. It's not hatred. It's somewhere like, it's like they're just freaking out. They never seen an Asian kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I came. You know, those those same people that would tease us became like f- our best friends. And Trip out on that, right? So we just grew up with that. We grew up being used to being Different. teased on the street or or just standing out like, wow, Chino, Japones, wow, what are you doing here? And so then me coming to LA and being weird to Koreans because like Koreans are looking at me weird because how come you don't speak Korean but you speak Spanish you're that is, weird yeah that is you know how, what I mean and that's a struggle man. yeah and you know now it's more normal that that a kid might you know speak a different language when you know he's a, yeah you know, now it's cool it's cool but back then I was a freak show like they took me around my elementary school like I was a freak like say something in Spanish I and hate that I feel you <laughs> It's hard. Yeah. So, yeah, I never felt, you know, I, I I never felt like I had to, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird. I always felt like I'm the different one, but I got so used to it that I never felt like this pressure, like, try to fit into uh, That's anything. so dope. I think, you though, that I mean? kind of makes makes us stronger because I, I was the only blue-eyed, mm-hmm. you know, I had, and like... What they call it, la blue-eyes, la güera? Yeah, güera. Right? They call it güera. <laughs> And it was always like me trying to prove because I'm half, and yeah. it was always me trying to prove who I was. Same thing, and I would say like, yeah. "Oh, I'm Chapina, I'm from yeah. from Guatemala." Be like, "Say something," and I'm like, "I'm not a dog, dude. I'm not a dog." And when I was younger, I always wanted to be like them. Yeah. And then everybody would be hating on me. They'd be calling me like "white bitch" or you know what I mean, yeah. like "oh, you think you're all that." And I used to people used to jump me, and all this stuff used to happen to me. And I think at some point, kind of like you, I just went, fuck it. I'm dope. Like, I don't mm. need to to try to be like you. Yeah. I'm going to be me. But it took a long time for that to, like, mm-hmm. to come to terms with right. that being mm-hmm. good. Yeah. Because when you're a little kid, all you want to do is be like every. You just want to exactly. fit in. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a freak did, show, you know, for sure. I was like, you know, I was trying to dress like everybody else. And, yeah, and just you know, be cool. Tr- my hair doesn't go back, but I would put on a hairnet or whatever to make my hair go back and just because all, all my homies had like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. hair yeah. back and, just you know, try, try to, to assimilate in. into the culture and then later you get it you get but it. you know what's dope and i think bringing this full circle around is that that's where that's where hip-hop comes in oh hip-hop is like because back then it what, was yeah. a freak show too yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't cool per se. It was like mm. you just all had a universal love for this thing. Yeah. And yeah. through this thing, we all connected. So you got yeah, to like. like hip hop made it. Uh, like I said, hip hop made it cool for you to just be whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because that's that's when I started meeting like the nerdy white kid that listens to hip hop. Hip hop. Yeah, all for sure. Hip-hop. And you know, you you meet you meet the the cholo. Uh, that's like. Yeah, I listen to Public Enemy. I listen. Yeah. To, you're like, oh shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and you learn from them because knowledge, like, yeah. the knowledge. So I think like, it's. You make a good point because if you're knowledgeable in hip hop, you, you're they, cool. You're respected. That's yeah, what exactly. makes you cool. So it's, like, it's not how you look, you, it's yeah, about what you know. Exactly. So when you're a hip hop, you just like. You could just be whatever. There's no. Yeah. I mean, there's a hip hop style, but you don't have to be that. No, you, you know don't, and you can be different. You yeah. can be a little Beastie Boy, White Boy, yeah. Skater hip hop, or you can be the gangster hip hop, or right. you can be like, you know, the knowledgeable, yeah. educated hip hop. Yeah. Like, I love that about it. Yeah. That's so yeah. beautiful. Yeah. All right, so final question before mm-hmm. we go: um, What would you say? Because you're here, and it's first among equals. You're here because I think that you are. First in what you do, first among equals is being, you know, uh, sort of moving forward and being such a great inspiration to others. What do you think is your your first now at the end of the day? Like, what is it you're trying to do? 
What is it that I'm trying to do? Bring world peace? No, just... Oh, wow. <laughs> and no, game <laughs> over. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not, you know. Um, you can, And you can, however you perceive that. You know, I'm not trying to change the world or anything. But I, I think if each one of us does a little something towards that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, towards making, you know... Uh, Every, everywhere a better place, you know what I mean? Uh, through friendships, through our connections, and, and you know, and that's why I love hip-hop so much, that hip-hop is that, that world connection, you know what I mean? Like, I could probably travel anywhere in the world and, and be like, you know, hey, anybody know someone in Thailand that could show me around? The hip-hop community will connect that. And then they'll receive you like your family because you know such and such, or, yeah. or because you're just hip hop. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's true. And uh, I, I think if all of us just kind of created uh, our own network, that's yeah. that's a little bigger than than what it is, you know, than just your block, you know, your neighborhood or your city. Uh, it, you know, it, it could be something more powerful. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, like there, there really could be more unity amongst, you know, the, you know on a more uh, global scale. Because absolutely, if if the youth does that now and they can, because they have what they have now, Facebook, wow. and they have all these ways to connect with yeah. each other worldwide. And I see it happening. You know what yeah, I mean? A yeah. lot of times you see this. The social media videos and everybody connects with them because everybody's mad at the same thing. Mm -hmm. you know That's I mean? true. So all these young kids, eventually they're going to be our government. You Absolutely. know what I'm saying? They're going to be the future teachers. The ones, yeah. The ones that are going to be Make the, the, decisions the influencers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it would be a beautiful thing if, 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 you know, if, if they already have this kind of global base when they get to that position, you know what I'm saying? Yes, and you're and you've created a mecca, a mecca where yeah. people can come and create those connections. So I yeah, want to say we're all the same. I mean, we're I so want to say though, like, thank you. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I I would love for us to be different, but be the same. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uniqueness, but still be connected yeah, yeah. and still love each other for exactly. who we are. Exactly. 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 Well, I want to say thank you so much for coming to First Money no, Equals. Thank you. No, thank you. Um, do you want to do you want to do any plugs? No. IG, Instagram, anything? No, I'm bad. I'm bad with. You're shout bad. Outs, yeah. All right. Well, that's yeah. cool. It's all Shout good. out to everybody. Shout out to everybody. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Tino, for joining no, us. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. Peace.